Hi, this is Dan from Mochwaker Appliance Repairs. Fisher & Baikal washing machines have two different types of fault messages. The first type is a user warning, when it makes a little tune like this, which is the same tune it makes when you first turn it on. These are usually faults that you can clear yourself or something wrong with a connection to the washing machine. The other kind of fault is what's actually referred to in the manuals as a fatal error. This means fatal to the cycle, the cycle can't carry on. And for that it makes this continuous beeping sound like this. Today we're going to talk about the first category, the user warnings, and then in the next video we'll talk about the other fault codes. While the washing machine is making that little rising tune, the lights for the cycle and settings that it was on will stay on, but there will be one or two lights flashing. And for the user warnings, those flashing lights are what we're going to pay attention to. I did try and film this to show you each of the faults, but unfortunately with my camera, they were just um, strobing even the lights that were on solid. So instead I'm going to just use a few pictures here and circle the LEDs that are flashing as we talk about each code. I'm going to quickly go over a summary of each code so that you may figure out what you need without having to watch the whole video. And then I'm going to go through the common causes and things to check for each of the codes afterwards in a bit more detail. The first three we're going to talk about is if the hot light is flashing, the cold water light is flashing, or both the hot and cold water lights are flashing together. As you might guess, this means that the washing machine can't get the water it's looking for. If the hot light is flashing, it means it can't get any hot water, or the water coming in the hot valve is actually cold and hasn't heated up in enough time. If the cold light is flashing, it means it can't get any cold water, or the water coming in is too hot, which could be that your hoses have been accidentally swapped around. Or if both of them are flashing, it means it can't get any water at all. The next code is if the water level light is flashing. This means that the machine is overloaded and is struggling to agitate with the load that's in there, or that the water level you have selected, if you've selected one manually, is too low for the amount of washing you've got in there and you need more water. If either the first rinse or the spin light are flashing, then this is the suds lock error from too much soap suds. If it's one of these lights flashing and the spin speed light as well, this is out of balance, which is probably one of the most common codes you get. And finally, if the lid lock light is flashing, it means that the washing machine can't lock the lid as it's going into the rinse or spin. So if we have either of those three codes, the hot light flashing, the cold light flashing, or both together, we need to check our hoses. The cold and the hot inlet are marked in the plastic with a C and an H. We've drawn over it in pen to make it a little bit more obvious on this machine. The C is upside down because it's made for when you're looking over the back of the machine. And if you're not getting water in, the first thing to check is make sure your tap is turned on. Uh, some of the super tubs, and the older super tubs, the tap will turn, but the valve actually won't open up inside. So what you can do is turn the water off, take the hose off, point it into the sink, and then turn it on, and make sure you're actually getting water flowing out from here. If you're not, it could be the tap, or it could also be you may or may not have a second washer, uh, sorry, a, a primary filter, in the hose washer um, and this could get blocked up usually on the cold because the hot water often the sediment will settle out but if you've got that and filter there you need to check that um, and then the other filter you've got is inside the valve itself so if that first one is dirty then some of it will have got through to the second one as well again in both the hot and the cold but the, the cold is the most common there's a little wee piece of plastic here I'm just going to zoom in closer so you can see so there's a little plastic ridge on the filter, you just need a pair of pliers or maybe a pair of tweezers or something like that and pull it out and we can see that this one has actually got a little bit of green build up of some kind and then I always just have a toothbrush, you can give this a scrub out and clean it out in your sink. Now you do not want to try and run this without the filter there, the filter is there for a reason and that is to protect the valve. We can't take these valves apart and clean them and if grit gets inside they will actually drip at the end of your wash, it'll just go drip, 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 and fill your machine back up with water. So as annoying as it can be to clean these filters out, it saves you having to put a brand new valve in it if it gets grit in it. The third thing that could happen is it could be a faulty water valve. 
on these smart drives, usually that's a separate actual error code. We'll talk about those faulty, uh, fa fatal error codes that will come up. But it could be that the valve is dying and the electronics are not picking that up and the valve is just not letting water in. But you want to check first that that filter there is clear. The filter at your tap end, if you have it, let's see if the light can get on that there. You may not. You may just have a, a standard hose washer like that. But yeah, check your filters are clear, check your taps turning on. And uh, most of the time, depending on what your water supply is like, it'll just be that filter. So if the machine is flashing the high water level light, then that is the overloaded code. It's actually quite rare. These smart drives will struggle through <laughs> almost anything. Um, but basically means you've got too much washing in for your water level, if you're choosing your own water level, or your whatever's in there is too bulky. You know, you've got a, something like a pillow or a great big... Uh, duvet or a jacket or something like that is not really good for using in one of these machines and the motor just cannot agitate properly. The answers to that are to choose a higher water level if possible, take some washing out uh, or if you've got a particular bulky thing you might need to take it down to the laundromat and put it in a front load washing machine where it's not got an agitator trying to agitate. The other thing that can happen is that the um, Fish and Pike will have a special automatic clutch system. The agitator and the out in a bowl there are tied together for spin. You can see they're turning together. When the machine fills up with water, as well as this whole bowl going down with the weight on the springs, the inner bowl here actually floats up. I don't know if you can see, there's a small gap there, it lifts up. And when it's sitting up, that agitator, sitting up fully, disengages. And that leads it to agitate. If it's got a lot of soap scum or something on it, the bowl may not be floating up quite enough and it can be just catching. That will usually bring up a separate code, one of the, the F codes, um, to say that the bowl has not disengaged or re-engaged properly. But I have come across where that bowl is um, only partially disengaging, so it doesn't bring up that code, but it comes up with an overloaded code. Very unusual, but just make sure this bowl just pops up and down like that if you're getting repetitive, repetitive uh, overloading codes. The subs lock code is not very common. It's surprisingly enough caused by too much soap powder and what happens is a lot of excess soap powder causes a lot of soap suds and the soap suds will actually end up as a layer between this inner bowl and the outer bowl that actually holds the water there's only about um, you know 15 mil between the two bowls and when the machine goes to start spinning it's got this layer of soap suds between the bowl and the stationary outer bowl and that causes a bit of drag now you wouldn't think that that would be enough drag for to cause a problem but it is and it's not just on the fish and pike or washing machines but it will sometimes try and add water to help wash those soap suds away but if there's too much it'll stop and beep the best thing to do there is you can wait the manual says to wait 10-15 minutes let the soap suds subside you can also put it back to or put it onto a deep rinse or put it back to the wash let it wash through um, and going forward obviously you want to make sure you're using less soap powder the other thing that can happen, if you have a partially blocked drain, so that the water is still draining out, but not properly. So it's draining out fast enough not to trigger the fault to say, hey, I can't drain. But when the water level gets down to near the bottom, the machine then starts to try and spin. And if between that point of where it's almost empty and starts to spin, the water hasn't dropped enough to be clear of the bowl, the bottom of the bowl might be dragging in water, and that drag can bring up that code again. That's very rare. Most of the time, soap suds means too much soap powder. Um, rinse it out, put less in next time, and you'll be fine. Now, the outer balance code can just be things not distributed properly. It can especially happen if you have a couple of very heavy things and a couple of light things mixed in together. Basically, when everything's washing in there, it's all floating around, and then when the water drains out, it all drops straight down. If you have a mixture of heavy and light things, you might end up with a heavy thing sitting here, a light thing sitting there. They'll drop straight down in position, and then when it tries to spin, it can't balance it. So sorting your load by fabric type, cottons versus linens, that kind of thing, can make quite a difference. The other thing is if you've got it on a manual water level, you're choosing the water level yourself, and you choose high and don't put enough washing in there, it may be that just before it starts to spin, a couple of things are sitting here and there's an empty space there. And so the water will drain down and things won't be distributed evenly. If you select an automatic water level, you'll notice that the level is often just below the washing. Little bits of washing will be just poking above the water. But that means there's no pockets of just water sitting in there and everything is going to naturally be sorted out as evenly as it can so it drops down evenly. 
on most of these machines, unless you've got a particularly light fabric or something like that, auto water level is the best, uh, particularly light or particularly heavy fabric, auto water level is the best thing to do. The other thing on these smart drives, if they continually go out of balance, even with a very balanced load, so it's coming up out of balance code and the load is almost perfect, you just shuffle things around and if you're lucky you'll get it started. What can happen is the suspension rods can wear out, and so this bowl here is actually sitting on springs. When it fills up with water, it goes all the way down, and then when it drains the water out, it comes back up, um, and it's got this freedom of movement. Now, as well as springs, there's some dampeners in the four rods, one in each corner. And so if the dampeners wear out, the bowl will actually bounce quite a bit. It's very hard to describe and show without having um, several washing machines around, but basically if I press this bowl down and then suddenly release it, you see it comes up and does a couple of little bounces. A brand new machine will just kind of come up and do no bounces. A very worn out machine will shoot up very quickly and oscillate around quite a lot. And that means if the load is not perfectly balanced, that just bounces around on the springs and goes out of balance, whereas a good set of rods will dampen it out and keep things relatively steady. So if it's going out of balance very easily, even when the load is well organized, um, same material fabric and all settled in there, then you might need a new set of suspension rods. And finally, if the lid lock light is flashing, it means that the lid is open. So if you close the lid, the machine will lock the lid and continue with the cycle. It's very rare that there's actually a lock fault or something like that to cause this code. So I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, ask in the comments and I'll try to help you out. And I'll be back in the next video showing you how to read the other style of vault code.